Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where today we are back with another senescence video. Yay! So senescent cells, cells that stop dividing and secrete a bunch of inflammatory factors, increase in number with age. There are different ways in which a cell can become senescent, and so there are many variations in senescent cells. There's increasing evidence that this increase in number isn't just correlative, but is instead driving aging in different tissues, resulting in loss of tissue function. Therefore, there is interest in understanding the action and impact of different drugs that can target cellular senescence, known as sonotherapeutics. We spoke about this recently, but basically you can split sonotherapeutics into three different categories. And so the first strategy works by killing senescent cells, referred to as senolytics. The second strategy involves inhibiting the pro-inflammatory secretory phenotype of senescent cells, referred to as senomorphics. And the last approach is to activate our endogenous senolytic system, referred to as immune surveillance. And so it's this latter strategy that I didn't really cover in so much detail in that previous video that we'll talk about more in this video, as we'll discuss two recent publications. The first, that is a Nature paper that shows a relationship between senescent immune cells and the accumulation of tissue dysfunction. And a second article that shows activating invariant natural killer T cells can coordinate removal of senescent cells. And so once we've taken a look at those two papers, I'll kind of wrap up my thoughts together. So if you've been a subscriber for a while now, you're probably familiar with the concept of cellular senescence and the idea that it is a cell fate that can be thought of as a tumor suppressive mechanism to prevent damaged cells from further replicating. But it also has this senescence associated secretory phenotype known as the SASP, which are thought to mediate the pathophysiological effects such as reinforcing and spreading senescence and activating the immune system to clear senescent cells. And so if the cells aren't cleared, it could result in chronic inflammation, which could have deleterious pro-aging effects. And so this immune-mediated clearance is known as immune surveillance. And one of the reasons that senescent cells are thought to increase with age is due to a decline in the activity of the immune system. And this reduction in the ability of the immune system to mount an immune response is referred to as immunosenescence, and it's thought to explain why there are age-dependent changes in increased disease susceptibility and a reduction in the effectiveness of vaccines. But this is so unclear, and so in this first study, they wanted to further explore the impact of immune system ageing to organismal ageing. And to do that, they wanted to effectively enhance ageing, accelerate ageing in the immune cells so that they could see the impact on the rest of the body. So they developed a mouse model whereby using a genetic tool, they could reduce the ability of a cell to repair DNA damage only in hematopoietic cells, which are cells that give rise to all the blood cells, including the innate immune cells, like your T cells and B cells. And so with reduced DNA repair capability, it results in the accumulation of endogenous oxidative lesions and senescent cells. And because it'll be relevant for when I show you all the different figures later, the way that they do this is by effectively knocking out the gene ERCC1. And so if you see that from now on, that's the gene that they've knocked out. And the authors of this paper have already shown that when this gene is knocked out in all cells of a mouse, it results in the accumulation of senescent cells in several tissues. But here in this case, they're only eliminating it from the hematopoietic cells. So cool, I, I hope that made some, some sense. And so despite deficiencies in the DNA repair machinery of the immune cells in these mice, when these mice were young, they still looked like wild-type mice and the symptoms only seemed to manifest later in life. Notably, one of the first observations was a reduction in white blood cell count, which was not affected in younger mice, but after around six months of age. Now, whilst the model didn't fully recapitulate what happens in the immune system of naturally aged mice, it showed that it did induce an accelerated degenerative process in the immune system, as there was a reduced immune response in these ERCT1 defective mice when they treated the mice with immunogenic protein known as KLH. And so this reduced immune response is similar to what's seen in observational human studies. And along with this reduced immune response, they also observed increased expression of senescence markers in immune cells that induce a cell cycle arrest 
as well as increased expression of SASP components compared to controls, suggesting that more of these immune cells were themselves becoming senescent. But the interesting finding was that they found that the aged immune system also drove senescence and loss of tissue homeostasis in non-immune organs. For example, in these figures that I'm showing now, you can see increased P16 and P21 expression in many different tissue types compared to the control. And this was seen in the old ERCC1 defective mice. And this also correlated with a reduced lifespan in these mice as well. So it also suggested that immune senescence was preceding peripheral senescence. So going back to what I was saying earlier about potential reduced immune surveillance, whereby it's this reduced immune response that could be correlating with the increased presence of senescent cells. But to analyse this link further, they then did some pretty cool techniques. The first approach involved taking splenocytes from these ERCC1 defective mice and transplanting them into a reporter mouse that can be used to identify senescent cells using luciferase. And so splenocytes are just white blood cells taken from the spleen. And what they found was that splenocytes taken from these mice significantly increased levels of luciferase signals at one and two weeks after transplantation compared to splenocytes from control mice. And so this all kind of suggested that these aged splenocytes can drive cell non-autonomous senescence in several tissues through what they refer to as a gain-of-function mechanism. But in addition to this gain-of-function, they also looked to see if there was a loss of function to explain the increase in senescent cells. So this time they took splenocytes from young mice and gave those young splenocytes to the ERCC1 defective mice and they found that it reduced senescence in several tissues. So in many ways it kind of rescued the phenotype. And so this supported that there was a loss of function mechanism in which the aged immune cells are unable to suppress senescence. So, so far the work supports a connection between a senescent immune system driving systemic aging by both a loss of function and a gain of function. And so in terms of therapeutic relevance, in the last part of this paper, they gave three-month-old mice rapamycin for six weeks and they saw that it rescued the loss of function and suppressed the gain of function impacts that we've just discussed. And so given that rapamycin is considered a senomorphic, which are described to suppress the secretory phenotype, it suggests that reduced secretion of these inflammatory factors could be behind the cell non-autonomous effects whereby the SASP of the immune cells could be driving senescence in the other tissues. But I don't think that can be concluded for certain at the moment. However, speaking of rapamycin, it's also just worth mentioning here as well, in case you haven't heard the news, that there is a large clinical trial named Participatory Evaluation of Aging with Rapamycin for Longevity Study, or PAL, that will be the first study to see if rapamycin works as well in humans as it does in mice where they're planning to follow up 200 participants over 12 months testing four different rapamycin dosing regimens in a double-blind, randomised, placebo-controlled trial. I'll provide some links for some more information about those studies if you're interested. Anyway, to summarise this first paper, the authors conclude that targeting senescent immune cells with senolytic drugs has great potential for suppressing multi-morbidities of old age. And so this leads me on to briefly mentioning the second study that shows some new insights into the endogenous mechanism of senescent cell clearance, immune surveillance as we've been talking about in this video. And so I won't go into as much detail as I've just done in that first paper, mainly because the authors have already made a mini video describing it in detail if you're interested. Anyway, what they show in this study is that there is a class of T cells known as invariant natural killer T cells that are involved in the removal of pathologic senescent cells. For example, they demonstrate that senescent periodipocytes, so fat cells, that accumulate in mice fed on a chronic high fat diet can be reduced by activating these natural killer T cells, which can be activated by providing the mice with alpha galactosyl ceramides. Activation of these T-cells reduced the number of senescent cells and also improved glucose control in these mice. And so this is a nice example of the third strategy of my senotherapeutic tree, which I spoke about before, whereby activating our endogenous senolytic immune surveillance could be another therapeutic option that is worth keeping an eye on for the treatment of age-associated diseases 
and potentially aging itself. As this would help to mediate the failure of the immune surveillance to efficiently recognise and target senescent cell clearance that we think could be resulting in the accumulation of senescent cells in the first place. Along with the fact that whilst there's a lot of potential for senolytics, there are also still some concerns about the long-term safety of senolytics as a treatment option, so it's good to explore these other alternative methods as well. But basically, understanding how immune cells are involved in senescent cell clearance, along with how they become senescent and damage themselves, are very interesting topics at the moment, and I expect that we will hear much more details and insights into this very soon. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.